By now, it's probably no secret that Adobe Illustrator is not just the industry standard tool when it comes to vector design, but it's also the most advanced tool as well, offering more features and capabilities than any of its rival applications. These benefits don't come without a cost, though. Adobe software is infamous for its high price tags, the monthly fees, and its demanding hardware requirements. This has opened up the door for alternative applications, such as Affinity Designer, that offer casual users access to a high-end design tool at only a fraction of the cost. In this video, I'd like to talk a little bit about the differences between these two applications. But before I do, I just want to make one thing perfectly clear. I am by no means saying that Affinity Designer is better than Adobe Illustrator. In my opinion, Illustrator is a definitively better tool for vector design. However, there are some areas where Affinity Designer really outshines Illustrator, and I think the Adobe team can learn from them. In this video, we'll be going over eight things that Affinity Designer does better than Adobe Illustrator. In a way, Affinity Designer is a two-in-one design solution. It breaks down into two separate personas. It has the designer persona, which is meant for working with vector graphics, but it also has the pixel persona as well, which is meant for working with pixel-based images. Each persona has its own set of tools to work with. This means that not only can you create vector graphics in Designer, but you can also perform many common image editing tasks as well, such as cropping photos and objects, deleting backgrounds from images, painting and erasing, dodging and burning, and more. Having the ability to switch back and forth between vector and pixel environments all in a single application is very convenient. As an Illustrator user, you won't have the ability to do this. You'll have to switch back and forth between Illustrator and Photoshop. Another area where Designer really shines is that it allows you to add adjustment layers to your work. Adjustment layers are non-destructive edits you can make to the contents of a layer. They can be toggled on and off at any time. What's great about how adjustment layers works in Designer is that it allows you to add pixel-based adjustment layers to vector layers. This means that you can adjust the color curves of a vector layer as well as the white balance, the shadows and highlights, the exposure, and much more. Illustrator, on the other hand, doesn't have the ability to add pixel-based adjustments to vector objects. In fact, it doesn't allow for adjustment layers at all. One distinct advantage Affinity Designer has over Illustrator is that it provides for more options when applying grids to your canvas. This is an area where Illustrator falls short to even free design applications. In Illustrator, you can only create grids using vertical and horizontal lines, and the only properties of your grid that you can change are the color of the grid lines and the spacing between each grid line. Now, there are workarounds, of course. For example, you can manually create an isometric grid by making a rectangular grid and then transforming it, but for whatever reason, there's no way to quickly generate basic isometric grids in Illustrator, which can be incredibly frustrating when trying to create isometric art. Affinity Designer, on the other hand, allows you to create grids of all types, including isometric grids and grids at custom angles. Not only that, but Designer also has a built-in isometric tool that allows you to transform objects to fit your grid lines. As of right now, Illustrator has nothing of the sort. So if you're someone who plans on creating a lot of isometric art or anything else that relies heavily on the use of grids, then you'd probably be better off using Designer. Another benefit you'll enjoy as an Affinity Designer user is in how intuitive the user interface feels. A good example of this would be when working with gradients. When working with gradients in Designer, you can reposition each end of the gradient on the canvas by simply clicking and dragging on either handle. Illustrator has a much clunkier way of handling gradients, though. One end of the gradient is used for repositioning the gradient, whereas the other end is used for rotating and resizing it. I've always found this method of working with gradients to be needlessly complicated, and it's one area in which Adobe can really learn from the likes of Affinity Designer and Inkscape. Another example of Designer having a more intuitive user interface would be in the way that strokes are applied. In Illustrator, strokes are applied to your objects by manually inputting a numerical value or by holding a click over the up arrow. In Affinity Designer, though, you're provided with a handy slider that allows you to make your strokes bigger and smaller much more quickly. And it makes for a much better experience if you just want to size your stroke in a freehand fashion as opposed to manually inputting numerical values. These are just a couple of examples of Affinity Designer having a much more intuitive user interface in Illustrator. As you continue to use the software and explore all of its features, though, you'll probably start to notice that this is a pretty common theme. Tying in with user interface controls would be the ability to offset objects, which is another area where Affinity Designer casts a shadow over Adobe Illustrator. 
Offsetting is an essential function when it comes to vector design. It's a way of enlarging or shrinking an object by adding an equal amount of space around its edges as opposed to simply increasing its width and height. In Illustrator, the way to offset an object is to navigate through a disorganized menu system to find the feature, then manually input a numerical value to offset your object by. This is problematic if you don't know exactly how big the offset should be and just want to manually eyeball it. In Designer, though, offsetting has its own dedicated tool, known as the Contour tool, that can be accessed directly in the tool menu or by using a keyboard shortcut. Not only does the Contour tool allow you to offset your objects by inputting a numerical value like Illustrator does, but it gives you on-canvas handles for freehand adjustments as well. Anchor points are the individual coordinate points that make up a vector object. For example, the anchor points of a square would be the four points in each corner. Moving those corners, or anchor points, will change the shape and appearance of the square. Anchor points can be used to change an object's shape, size, contour, position on the x and y axis, and many other structural properties. For whatever reason, though, you'll need to use four different tools in Illustrator if you want to edit anchor points in all possible ways. You have the Direct Selection tool, the Add Anchor Point tool, the Remove Anchor Point tool, and then just the regular Anchor Points tool. This means that you regularly have to switch back and forth between all of these tools when editing anchor points in Illustrator, which makes for a really clunky workflow. In Affinity Designer, though, all of these functions can be performed with a single tool the Node tool, which basically combines all four of Illustrator's anchor point editing tools into one handy tool, making it much easier to work with. A good example of this would be the tutorial I made demonstrating how to create a drip effect with Illustrator. In order to add drips to the object, I had to regularly switch back and forth between the different tools. If I had done this in Affinity Designer, though, I could have gotten it done much quicker and with much less back and forth between tools. Another area where Affinity Designer has Illustrator dead to rights is when it comes to hardware requirements. According to Adobe's website, Illustrator requires 8 gigabytes of memory and 2 gigabytes of disk space. By comparison, Affinity Designer only requires 2 gigabytes of memory and roughly 1 gigabyte of disk space. This means that Designer should run optimally on your average consumer grade computer. Adobe Illustrator, on the other hand, will require you to shell out more cash for higher end hardware. This final point that I'd like to touch on may be less significant in the grand scheme of things, but this is a real pet peeve that I have about Adobe products in general, and that is that they all require you to download the Adobe Creative Cloud, which is an app that runs in the background at all times, hogging system resources. For those of you who may be PC gamers, I'm sure you're already aware of just how frustrating it could be when you just want to download a game that you paid for, but you're forced to install a game store app that's going to run in the background at all times and harass you with notifications throughout the day. Creative Cloud is the graphic design equivalent of the Epic Game Store, and not having to deal with something like this when using Affinity Designer is a refreshing change of pace. With Affinity Designer, you simply pay for it once, install the application, and nothing else, and you're done. I'd like to wrap this up by pointing out one last time that the point of this video is not to say that Affinity Designer is better than Illustrator. As I said previously, I believe that Illustrator is a much better tool, and for a variety of reasons. Illustrator has features and capabilities such as envelope distortions, perspective distortions, 3D tools, and much more that Affinity Designer simply doesn't have. If you'd like a more comprehensive comparison of these two apps, then I wrote a monster blog post a few months ago where I broke down all of the pros and cons of each so you can compare and decide for yourself. Check out the link in the description for more information. And as always, thanks for watching. If you found this lesson useful, then consider checking out my Affinity Designer Masterclass. It's a collection of over 60 videos where I go over all of the tools and features in Affinity Designer, and I explain what they are and demonstrate how they work. Kind of like how I did in this video. We even have a private community where you can ask questions and get help from me anytime you want. And best of all, there's no monthly membership fees. You just pay $17 one time and you're in for life. I'll have some information about that in the description of the video if you want to check that out. As always, thanks for watching.